presenting the groom down with her. Hopefully hers too. <laughs>
please be wise. Remember, breathe in and breathe out. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if I ask everyone, please be seated. On behalf of Jason, Stephanie, family, friends, welcome to their wedding celebration. John, who brings this beautiful bride to be married to this handsome groom? Her mother and I do. Give her a kiss. <laughs> Hold the bouquet for a moment. We will have a sweet, serious ceremony, but there's got to be an icebreaker. And hold hands, and the bouquet is perfect height, right hand. So turn all the way around towards your guests. Ladies and gentlemen, there are two very good reasons why I ask the bride and groom to face you at the beginning of their ceremony. First of all, I want them to see the happiness in your faces those that have traveled long distances to be part of the first day of their married lives. But I also want you to see the happiness and fear in their faces. <laughs> it's an honor for everyone to be here, but it's also a responsibility. When they say their wedding vows, you are making the same promises to them. And that's what wedding vows are. Wedding vows are promises. They're promising to be there in good times and in sad times. You're making the same promises. So the good times, christenings, birthdays, graduations. But also, be there for them during those sad times when they may need a hand to hold, a shoulder to cry on, or maybe just an attentive ear to listen to them. I will warn you all now, they may not want your advice. But by a nod of the head, please, everyone, accept that responsibility. Just nod your heads yes. I'm seeing 100%. That's great. Before we really get into the ceremony, I'd like to honor some people. So I'm going to ask, please, would our parents please rise and all of our sponsors please stand up? Please. All of our sponsors? Yes. If you're a sponsor, stand up. Yes. You're holding a veil. You're a sponsor. Stand up. I do this, ladies and gentlemen, because these people are honored. They're asked to be part of the wedding day. Well, the parents, they're going to be here anyways. But it's an honor for them to be here, and I think we owe them all a nice big round of applause. Please, give them the credit they are due. And we thank you all. You may now be seated. Thank you. Okay, now you get to turn toward me. Move this way just a little. Okay, good. <laughs> Making sure it's perfect. And I'm going to attempt this, ladies and gentlemen, and bear with me. I've welcomed you in English. I also would like to say Buenos Tardes and Magandan Hapan. No one's coming to shoot me, so I said it correctly. <laughs> Am I close? I hope. Good, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to explain a little history of our bride and groom, and that is you met at the work, the library, and she read you like a book. <laughs> you saw something in each other that first time, and he found out that you are the most dependable person Jason has known. That's, that's wonderful. Dependability. You didn't know that in the beginning, but you found it out. And you were the person, sir, that she wanted to spend time with. 
I've never heard that mentioned before. I want to spend time with you. That is a wonderful, wonderful compliment to you that she feels so confident that she just feels comfortable and enjoys being with you. Because guess what? This is the person you're going to be with for the rest of your life. The person that you have become friends with, lovers, today husband and wife, parents in the future, all of these things about you are going to bring you even closer together than you are today. Oh, you're in love, but you'll be more in love with each other 50 years from now. How do I know for sure? You're going to spend those good times and sad times with each other and realize that's going to bring you closer together. You're going to hold hands. You may rest your head on his shoulder. You'll put your arm around her for support. Those are the things that are going to make you even more lovers. Music playing during the proposal from Beauty and the Beast. This man is a good man. <laughs> you put a lot of work into that. I give you credit, sir. He's, he's a keeper. Yeah, good. Thumbs up. <laughs> and we have come here today to be part of the first day of the married lives. Like I said, it's an honor for everyone to be here, but it doesn't end today. I'm speaking to all your family and friends. Be there for them throughout the rest of their lives. Support them, listen to them, and do everything you can for them. We have some beautiful traditions, ladies and gentlemen, so I'm gonna call up our coin sponsors. If Vanjie, if you would please come up with the coins, and if they would also have Alex, Tess, and Bob. Would you hand him the coins, please? These gold coins, Arias, are a representation of the wealth, the love that they have for each other. So, sir, at this time, please, Jason, Give the coins to Stephanie, proving to her that you will support her in a manner in which she will become accustomed. You're making sure they're in there, aren't you, Stephanie? <laughs> okay. Now, Stephanie, please give them back to Jason as a symbol that you are trusting him with the money, at least for today. Ken, would you bring me those two chairs, please? The veil ceremony. May I please ask, ask Vernie and Julius, Ramon and Joji, to come up and please place the veil on our bride and groom. The veil represents the protection that they are giving each other, that God is giving them. It's a representation of their house. They are together in this house. Thank you. If you just step off to the side here, no need to sit down. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the cord ceremony. So if I please call up Karen, Ronnie, Vilma, and Ed. They will drape this cord around their shoulders. It is in the shape of the rosary, giving God's blessings, and it also is the shape of the number eight sideways the symbol of infinity, as your love and your marriage will last forever. And if ladies and gentlemen, if you would just step off to the side here for a moment. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we are all made in God's image. We have not only this outer shell, but the inner spirit, the inner person as well. The two of you have found each other. The two of you are like God has wanted. He gave you the gift of life. He gave you that gift through your parents, 
to pass on to future generations, the gift of love. Because the epitome of love is God. He has given you, all of us, a little bit of love to give away to the right person at the right time. For you, this is the right person, this is the right time. Your love is unique to just the two of you. Nobody has this love but the two of you because nobody met the way you did, nobody had that wonderful proposal. The first kiss, that is unique to just the two of you. There are over 200 weddings per day on an average in Las Vegas. None are like yours. None have ever had the love that you have. None of them in the future ever will sit here and become husband and wife. And the third wonderful gift, the gift of laughter. People don't think God has a sense of humor, but he does. And how do I know for sure? We're made in his image. If you can laugh and smile and enjoy, it's because God gave you that gift so that you can enjoy your life with the person you love. So at this time, I'm going to ask our cord sponsors if you would come forward and please remove the cord. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And if our veil sponsors would please come forward and remove the veil. And if you would stand up, please. Ken, if you would put the chairs back, please. I, Jason, take you, Stephanie. For my best friend. For my best friend. My love. My love. My wife. My wife. I give you my promise. I give you my promise. To stand by you. To stand by you. Laugh with you. Laugh with you. Cry with you. Cry with you. Share with you. Share with you. From this day forward. From this day forward. For all eternity. <laughs> I, Stephanie, take you, Jason. For my best friend. My love. My love. My husband. My husband. I give you my promise. I give you my promise. To stand by you. To stand by you. Laugh with you. Laugh with you. Cry with you. Share with you. From this day forward. From this day forward. For all eternity. For all eternity. A ring is a nice piece of jewelry, but it doesn't say anything. Neither does a beautiful strand of pearls, matching earrings. But when a common ring becomes a wedding band, and is worn on that left hand ring finger, it tells everyone, I have made a special promise to a special person. Ken, may I have those rings, please? Everyone has heard the old analogy that a ring is round. No beginning, no end. But I make a different analogy. A ring is like a hug. As you hug your wife, your arms form a circle. Returning his hug, your arms form a circle. And we know what two is. Two is always stronger than one. Jason, as you take that beautiful ring and place it on the finger of your beautiful bride, repeat these words. With this ring. With this ring. I promise you. I promise you. My love. My love. Ladies and gentlemen, these rings are only stone and metal, but what they represent 
is the love that the two of you have for each other, the respect that the two of you have for each other. That means more than anything else. But when you look at these rings, I want you to remember when you first met, when you first became friends, lovers, and today, and how much more you'll be in love with each other years from now. So these re rings represent something. By themselves, they're nothing. But what is in your heart for each other, that is special. With this ring, with this ring, I promise you. I promise you. My love. My love. Hold hands. I like to leave the bride and groom with what I call the power of suggestion. I've gone back in your history of what you told me of what we saw in each when we met, what you saw in each other. And I've picked something that whenever you see this for the rest of your lives, I want you two to point it out to each other when you're together. Doesn't matter if you see this in a movie, in a television, movies, uh, print, newspaper, or hear the spoken word. I want you two to point it out to each other every time you see this word. There's a catch. You can only use each reference one time for the rest of your lives. So if you see this word somewhere as you're driving by every day together, only the first time you see it can you point it out. If you point it out first, Jason, you're telling your bride, I love you more today than our wedding day. Stephanie, if you see it first, you're telling your husband, I would marry you all over again. And the word I've gone back to is your history, and the word is library. You like that, don't you? Yes. So it was the library that brought you two together. So if you're driving along and you see a library and it says uh, Las Vegas library, honey, library, I love you and I would marry you all over again. Even if you see it or hear it in a movie, point it out to each other. Don't let the people think you're crazy because you know what it means, okay? That's your special word. 43 years in the wedding industry, ladies and gentlemen, I've never used library before. <laughs> You've joined hands, you've exchanged rings, and you've made each other promises. So by the power vested in me by Jason, Stephanie, the sovereign state of Nevada, I am honored to pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss your bride. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to present to you a couple for the rest of our lives, Mr. and Mrs. Bellamore. Give a big hand. Yeah.